I suppose, I guess it's time we put this tractor back together again. It's been three months. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a little bit of a time period, yes. It's kind of in the way. Yeah. We've got other things we need to do in here. Yeah. And you're just in the way. So, we got the radiator. I got dad, so I don't need anything else. Let's hey, get her together. We we're don't... feeling rad today. <laughs> rad. And leg arms is busy doing house stuff. Yeah, yeah He's not, his mind isn't here yet. Yeah, and whenever we mess up on this thing, he won't see anyways, so that works out okay. So let's get to work. Let's put it in. And, and don't tell him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't tell him. God. So I just remember we left off. We're going to use that winch up there, the hoist, to raise the radiator into place, other than the... 10 ton chain hoist over here because it takes 10 years and is totally overkill and unnecessary. But we gotta hold this hood up because it's hanging off that hoist right now. So we brought the cherry picker back over here. We're gonna hook onto this old GPS bolt that we used to screw the antenna on. The GPS, we don't use that anymore. There's a nice one on top of the cab. Um, and then this will hold the hood from falling forward and being an absolute nightmare or HMS. So then we can use that hoist to get the radiator to lift it up to put it in. So we'll get to work starting now. That away so it doesn't scratch the paint. I guess you can lift up a little bit. Yeah, a little more. Okay, oh, that's good, yep. Yeah. All right, I'll get the, I need something like, is this the one with the bad end? Yes, it is. That needs a new end on it. This one. So it was a couple grand to have this thing fixed. It was like what, under 3,000, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was about 22, 2,300. 2,300 bucks. They almost gave up on it, and there was just a number of leaks that kept it from happening while they were their acid bath and a bunch of other products they go through to repair these things. There's only a couple places in Montana that do that, still, these big radiators. Fortunately, we have one relatively close by. But to replace this radiator and recore it would be close to $10,000. So they kept trying because they wanted to save us that six, $7,000. So they, 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 they said they got it tight. It's not leaking anymore. So if it runs another 10 or 15 years, that's, that's doing really good. So let's not drop it. And what about these? So what we're doing here is uh, probably somewhere in the transport process and us here in the shop a couple of the fins got laid over a little bit so this is a fin radiator fin straightening kit so you pick your size with the right teeth put it in and then you basically comb the fins straight again so we're gonna see if it works There, not bad. A couple of them are still kind of bent, but I think a lot of those were that way when we took it to them. Like Dad was just talking a minute ago, there's a cooler that goes in the front of this and it's pretty tight against it and some of them just get bent over time. So I think we're good. Let's, uh, let's hoist her up, put her up. Just notice part of the shroud is cracking right there. So we're gonna go ahead and weld some flat iron on that and get that tightened up. You can see there's been some uh, previous welding on this thing in the years past, but that one there is a vibration issue. Just, just this thing, vibrations just over time cause fatigue in the, the metal, and that's obviously one spot that got it. So let's clean that up. If you're welder on radiators, it's a smart idea to put something on the inside to uh, protect the veins because there's solder in there. The last thing you want to do is uh, cause some of that to unsolder itself with a big 
arc and a spark that flies and makes a mess of stuff. So put a bunch of stuff in there, clean it up. We'll probably need to, I'll have to probably have to slide it into position. So um, we'll have to push it out a little bit. And then see if it tilts down enough to go past the blade. Oop. Slip it. Slip off. Hi, honey. How'd you get in here? Rosie, did you bring us food? What? Did you bring us food? I'm hungry. What, what food did you bring us? None. Cookies? No. Pickles? I said none. <laughs> What's none? Is that sugary? Is yeah, that, is it? Uh, is not a new candy? Okay. I have the hose clamp here. Could you get me a impact gun with the, with the, is that 716? The you mean the 516? They're 516? Yeah. Yeah. Once I tighten these hoses up, it's not going to fall forward again. So it'll stay. Let me take all these chains off. There you go. No. You got two there? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah you got it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that hose is going to hold that. You I can, can put the other one on. Yeah, go do that. Then, uh, this one might not go on as easy. We'll see. It got kind of mangled up but taking it off. <sighs> Actually, can you know those well, see are you in there again? I know those little screwdriver, fly the screwdrivers. I could probably work this edge over. Oh, it is so stiff. Just got the four bolts in the bottom of the radiator, so we're just tightening out now. There's not a lot of room here to turn a wrench. The ratchet wrench does help, but I'm gonna try to work on it. They used to have the the air chamber for the air compressor on this bud was right here. That was your air tank. But at some point it leaked or something, so this one abandoned that and we put one in the back above the rear axle. But it takes up all the space up here. Look how thick that iron is. That's what I love about these things. Tight. I'll get the front ones. There we go. Thought we better just make a new hose for that radiator. I'm pretty sure I remember cutting this one uh, short to get it off because it was just seized on there. No big deal, just $140 for a three foot chunk of two and a half inch radiator hose. 140 bucks. Isn't that wild? Hmm, maybe I should have cut it off. All right, let's get to work. I need to make it at least 31. Be wise. I do like the look of these buds, but. I wouldn't mind if that fender stuck out like right there. Oh well. 
All right. Can I make this bend without kinking this hose? I don't know. Hmm. What do you do about that? Well, I, I think I got an idea how to fix that. They didn't have the braided hose or whatever you call it where it's got the wire wrapped around the side to keep it from collapsing itself. And I thought for sure it'd make that bend, but that's a 90 and it's not going good. As you can see this side, at some point, we had modified so that you don't have to make that kind of angle. So, we've got two options. I can take this off, fabricate an elbow on it so it turns, and, or at least add some pipe and then turn here so I can put a straight piece of rubber in. So that way um, it flows smooth and hopefully I don't have any leaks. Or two, I use the old hose, I just put a splice in it with the new hose. And uh, that'll give me long enough so I can put it in. Two is definitely easier and quicker, and we'll get this thing in the field and we'll be totally functional. Might not be quite as pretty, though these welds here, I wouldn't categorize as pretty. I think I'm gonna do option two. I don't know what I was thinking, but I could have just left along one of these. So, you know what? what? Tube's cheap. Why not? Just put it on there. Save half the lamp. I don't know what I was even thinking. See, when that hood folds down, it'll cover that. Perfect. There, all the tops buttoned up, so now we gotta put the condenser on, as well as the hydraulic coolers on the front, bolt them up to the radiator, and then this AC pump needs spaced a little bit differently when we put a different style pump on it. The old style pump was pretty archaic and expensive. This new style, are they rotaries? I'm not entirely sure. They're way better AC pumps. With that said, we had to build new brackets. Well, the brackets we built were just like an eighth of an inch offset from the belt, so the belt would flip off every now and then. So I got to modify that too. Let's keep going. Ready to lift this hood up. Put the bolts in that are the guides. There's these slots right here. And that way you can tilt the hood forward. We had to remove those if you guys remember in the video a while back because we couldn't get the hood far enough for you to radiator out. So got to put these back in. So yeah, I guess so. Go ahead and lift it. See what happens. I got it hooked to the, the winch there. So yeah. All right, how are we sitting here? A little more. Keep going right there. Yeah, I might be able to reach in and put this through one of these old guys. Okay. Like that. Okay, so I can get it. Okay, now I'm pushing it forward. Okay, can you push it through at all? I, can't I think I went too far. Did I go too far? I'll stick my finger in there and see. I feel the bolt. It needs to go back just a little bit that way. We tap it. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, so it's it's basically ready to go in. It's just a matter of it's just kind of tight, isn't it? It go towards me a little bit. Like right there. There we go. Okay. Oh man, right. It 
it's playing it on something. You ready right there? Yeah. It's through, but now I gotta get the nut on it. Go back to the south a little bit. A little more right there. Yeah, I got pressure on it. Oh, this is tricky. I can't get my fingers there. Oh, of course. I got to move out a little bit. It's just about to start threading. Oh, I gotta go a little more. All right there. Okay. Let me try that and see what that does. Okay. This one's gonna be a little tighter, it looks like. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. All right, let's let her down on the bolts. There we go. It's hanging on. Keep meaning to take this antenna bracket off, but uh, it's sure nice for things like this. And once in a while, we have to throw the old GPS back on. Yeah, now we're gonna look at that AC pump. See if that bracket leg arm's made. It's just, just like a, I threw the, the uh, level up to it, the straight edge, and flat against the face of this pulley here, it comes out little just left of the inside of this this belt puller right there we're not running two belts we're just running one and that little bit off sets enough to roll the belt and then cause it to kick off so i think it needs to come off and we got to true it up tight. Inside the cap barn, Turn the fan. If it was on a belt, you could turn the fan and uh, put the impact gun in different places and get them off. That, that uh, fan is mechanically driven. See that fan's gonna? Well, maybe not. Maybe that's gonna rub on the housing up there. It might have gotten tweaked a little bit. You might have to bend the top of that housing as maybe when it's getting worked on. Needs to go. There we go. We know it at least takes six gallons or twelve gallons, I should say. So we're gonna go ahead and just put put six of the uh, raw in, then mix it with water. Six of the water, and, and see how we're sitting. And maybe go by gallon by gallon by then. And some probably wonder if this water's distilled. It's not. It's uh, it's tap water. So we're full. But what's going on is it's, there's a lot of air left in the engine chambers that needs uh, burped out so that way we can get more fluid in this thing. So it's doing it right now. I'm sure bubbles run up through, but I've got to turn the master switch on. So we might give it a crank, just run over a couple times, and then that'll free up some space in that radiator so we can keep dumping more in. Yeah, 
There we go. She's running again, but we're missing tires. Set of four out there that are in the snow. And a ladder that got taken off for transport that hasn't been put back on since the Farm Progress show. Yeah. But there's some more things we got to do to it, but we're not quite there yet. So uh, you guys are sitting here a little longer. And then the Brute's up next. We've got some things going with that thing. So uh, yeah, you guys will be uh, excited to see what happens there. It's pretty sweet. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Leg arms will come back eventually when he gets done playing at his house. All right. God bless. We'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. There he is. Hi. I told you guys he's still alive. He's just <laughs> over there, you know. I thought maybe some smoke in the shop would get him all excited with ranching again, but it doesn't seem to be working. It seems like he's still content with playing with sheetrock, mud, and tape. Okay. I'll think of something next time.